Hey folks, my name is Tom Vassell. Welcome to the Dice Tower live Q&A that we do on a fairly weekly basis. Uh, last week Sam and Z joined me and maybe we'll do some more of that in the future. Today it is just me. So if you have any questions, I'll try to get those answered. You can ask them in the chat itself, which I'm looking at. Uh, but you can also, and I'll give priority to these, if you ask them in the Q&A section of Slack, if you're part of our Slack chat, if you're not, um, well, I will put a, uh, you, you can email me to get a link to join this Slack later on, or uh, maybe someone in Slack has a link to join the, 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 the Slack chat. But um, either way, you can still ask questions here in the Q&A session. So I appreciate everyone being here today. Uh, the, let's see where we're at. I, I'm not like constantly checking the, the Indiegogo fundraiser but we're at 88 percent all right that's cool like to see that go up hopefully <laughs> we'll be funded by the end of the week so that would be cool i got some more ideas in regards to that so anyway once again everybody thanks so much for anyone who's helping out on that apparently i have the wrong date here in the description so i better change that before people get too confused so it's not it's not december it is january and it's not January in all caps, it's just January. All right, so I fixed that. Okay, let's see. So we're going to start. Um, you said you don't drink alcohol. Do you get teased or looked down upon by people because of that? Or does that happen only in my country? Well, I don't know that I've ever been necessarily I guess some people look down on me on that. I, I don't feel that so much. I know there's definitely a lot of people who try to get you to drink, which I've always found kind of odd. That's, there's some things that are like taboo. Like if someone's a smoker and you try to get them to smoke, there's something wrong with you. But drinking, it seems to be okay. And eating, it's definitely okay, right? Someone was trying to lose weight and you're like, oh, come on, just this one cupcake. Um, I, I don't ever really feel looked down on. Uh, because I don't want a drink that can inebriate me, a drink that can make me lose control of my senses. I, I don't that I'm, I'm refusing to take that. There are plenty of delicious drinks in the world that I don't aren't not on, that are not alcoholic. So I don't know. I, 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 I get some people look at me weird because they're like, hey, I'll take you out for a drink, and I'm like, I don't drink, and then they're like, oh, oh, what do you do? I get more garbage about not drinking coffee than I do about not drinking. All right, um, who's my favorite hero villain in Star Wars Destiny? I don't know. I'll play with anybody. Probably Jabba is my favorite so far. Um, let's look at the Q&A here from Slack. I know nothing. Again, I'm going to say this now, and I'm not going to answer any more questions for the rest of this hour. I have no idea when reprints are coming out. I have no idea when games are coming out particularly different times of the year. If I do know them, I put it up on Dice Tower News. If you want to know when a specific reprint comes out from the company, that is a wonderful question to ask that company. Um, is Dice Tower Cruise on a cruise boat with just Dice Tower or with many other non-Dice Tower people cruising? What's the percentage breakdown? Uh, last year, I believe there was 3,800, 3,600 maybe sounds reasonable. And we had 400. So it was one out of every nine people, essentially, was Dice Tower, which is a pretty good ratio. Um, we're going up to 600 people this year, so the ratio will be higher. But, I mean, I, I thought that was pretty cool, honestly. What's the uh, best convention for a new designer to attend to help gain an audience for their game? Any convention, just get out there and show your game off. What game are you most excited to play in the 30-hour marathon? None. I will just play them all. I think I'll have a good time playing all of them. Probably the first couple. Um, as, as soon as I'm done with this live Q&A, actually, I'm going to get a haircut because my hair is all messy and drives me nuts. But after I'm done with that, um, I'm going to start putting together. I have the schedule done. I'm going to start putting up the scheduling for the live session. So you'll see those going up at some point today. Would you consider doing video reviews of games you did written reviews for, assuming you still own the game? Um, yeah, probably. I, I've made it a point, I think, to review every game that I own. 
in video form. Maybe you guys can see one in these videos and stuff that I haven't done. You can pop it and mention it here. I think I've done most of these as videos. If I haven't, I need to get around to it, but most of them I have. Um, I do not have a new town hall scheduled at this point in time. I'm sure we'll do another one. Do I see another version of code names coming out? Definitely. I'm sure they'll do something. Uh, this year's cruise, same destinations. Well, it would be Cosmo plus another place. And honestly, they could do Cosmo, I think, six years in a row. I mean, it's like a fun place to go to. We, I did one thing when I was there. There's like 30 things to do. So it would be a while before it got boring for me. Um... I saw you got bleeped on your blooper reel video. Does that mean Tom has a foul mouth off screen? No, I actually said folks. Hey, folks. It's just that folks came out slightly differently, which is why they all made fun of me. I, I do not curse at all in real life. Uh, my favorite hero, Welcome to the Dungeon, is probably the ninja. Um... I know it's not exactly a board game, but have you ever played Diplomacy? Oh, that's definitely a board game. If so, did you enjoy it? I hate Diplomacy. If you could choose one setting theme for a Time Stories expansion, uh, what would it be? Um, I, would, I want Time Stories to go into the future, into uh, uh, something that's not yet happened. I think that'd be fun. Um, I know that you're only reviewing published games. Would you re review a pre-production copy, though? Not a prototype, but with miniatures made a different plastic than the final version. I would do that for a very few select companies that are very big, and it's a good chance to get the big game out there early, but 99.9% .9 of the time, I will not do that um, at all. Which fans are more fanatical, Kingdom Death Monster or Scythe? Well, they're both fanatical, the Scythe fans were such fanatics that they drove Jamie Stegmeier off of Kickstarter. But I think Kingdom Death beats that. For example, Chaz Marlowe did a video on our channel a few weeks ago where he had the audacity to say that the game wasn't coming out till 2020 because those were the dates on the side. At the bottom of the page, it does point out that parts of the game, in fact, a lot of the game is coming out this year. And those guys came and, and beat the snot out of him. I've never had to delete so many negative, mean comments. And those were the ones that I deleted after Chaz came through and deleted comments. So many thumbs down. He didn't even say the game was bad. All he said was that it was going to be the delay in coming out. Uh, also, I would go that these guys are fanatical. If you look at the average amount that people are paying is like 680 or something. That's some pretty strong uh, fanatical de devotion to a game, which is fine. It's just that you got to be careful when you take that devotion to a game and go against people who may not think the game, same way of the game. Um, why is it that Euro games tend to not have inserts or is it just you? I don't know if you have an insert, but um, inserts are extremely, extremely expensive when adding to the cost of a game. That's why you don't see them in all games. How many tickets are left for Dice Darkon? I don't know. If you want one, go get one. Um, let's see if there's any questions on Slack. It'd be interesting if you do your favorite games that you mentioned in your top tens that look like it was filmed with a potato. I, I always find that kind of intriguing that people say things were filmed with a potato. I've not ever used a potato for filming. I believe we used the uh, best equipment that we had available to us about you know eight years ago when we were reviewing some of those. So that's probably, probably why it's bad. I'm not sure about the potato part. Um, me and Sam used to live in Korea. Now we both live in South Florida. Was that planned or was it an amazing coincidence? I wouldn't say it was either, but it wasn't planned. Um, we both were uh, using the same list to look for different jobs. We, found, we both found teachers at the same school, that's all. The fundraiser is a little misleading when it says plus shipping. There is no shipping. There is shipping for some people in some countries. Um, I don't think anyone has ever got upset if they said it said plus shipping and then they found shipping was zero. Um, but realize that there is shipping on everything. It's just that the dice tower is going to eat some of the costs. Voting as open on Board Game Geek for anticipated 2017. Do you participate in those polls? Not usually, sometimes, but honestly, those all these polls and things, I can look at them, but I tell you, the more you get involved in that stuff online, the more of your time that takes up. It's like Facebook and Twitter and everything. 
I try to keep one eye on these things, but if you spend too much time on this stuff, then you don't get anything else done and I want to be able to produce content. And this week, I have to even do the content earlier than normal because we're not going to be able to work on Thursday or Friday. I mean, we are working, we're doing the, the marathon, but so I have to have everything done by Wednesday. How was the ogre hot sauce? It was okay. It was barbecue sauce. It wasn't hot at all. It, it, it said on there the first ingredients were ketchup and mustard, and it tasted a little bit like a ketchup mustard mix. It's fine, but I wouldn't get it again. They just want to see you get drunk and laugh at you. Possibly. I, I don't... I, I never find it funny when people get drunk. I, I feel more, more sad when I see drunk people because I found that, that people, when they get drunk, are either very sad, which they're not fun to hang out with, they're angry, in which they're really not fun to hang out with, or they're stupid, which I, I don't know. I just, drunk people are not fun at all. And I find it weird when people brag about getting drunk because you are an unfun person to be around at that point. I guess other drunk people enjoy it. How much did the guys like adrenaline during the live play? I, they, I don't think they, they thought it was okay. They didn't think it was that great. I like it a lot more than both of them do. But me and Derek both really enjoy it. Um, so, whatever. They both liked, uh, they both really liked the, um, a little, 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 little. what's that game called now? The Vikings Gone Wild game better. In fact, Vikings Gone Wild's in my collection and so is Santorini. Two games that got added to my collection. Um, how do you store all your pitch car stuff? I have it in a big plastic bin. Let's see here. I asked about SM before. You said to ask again in a few months. Yeah, but I don't remember what you asked. <laughs> um... If classic games were released for the first time today, would they be as successful as they were then? Well, no, but nothing, you know, everything is released in its time zone, right? TV, a lot of TV shows, if they were released today, would not be nearly as popular when they first came out. It's a hard thing to tell in this regard, right? There's very few games that are timeless. All right, let's look at the Slack questions. What are your thoughts on Bunny Bunny Moose Moose? It's a very, very silly game, but I enjoyed it. What are your favorite non-gaming locations in the Indianapolis area during Gen Con? I don't go to too many of them. Me and Melody last year went to the, the Kids Science Museum, which was really cool. But probably a little too low level for us. Um, so maybe this year if we stay there some more, we'll have a, a chance to see something cooler that's more our level. I'll ask around, I'm sure. Um... It'd be interesting if you'd share your screen under an analytics on YouTube from time to time to see the stats. Um, yeah, maybe. Maybe. I, I, can, I can tell you guys some analytics facts right now, though. I don't know how many people would find that interesting. I find analytics interesting, and I certainly look at them all the time. So I'll give you some numbers. And, I, and again, I'm not saying these numbers to, to, to brag at all. January has been very good for us so far. Analytics is always a couple days behind, so it's the 9th. And January only has up to the 7th. But so, so far in January, there's been 120, I'm sorry, 800, 824,000 views, which I'm very excited about. I mean, that's, that's really cool. It's an average of over 100,000 a day, which we've never had a month with an average that was that high. Oh, no, November. November had an average that was just slightly over um, 100,000. I always make these goals, not like whatever, you know, like, for the longest time, my goal was to hit a million views in a month. Then two, then 1.5, then two, then 2.5, then three. We hit three million views in December, which was really cool. Um, and then November was, I mean, no, I'm sorry, we hit November. November was 3.1, and then December was 3 million, which was extremely good, especially to, since we took the entire first week of December off. We didn't take it off. We worked on the cruise, but we didn't put up any videos that first week of December. And so that was really good to see that. Like October was 2.7, but like last year, December was 2.3. To this year, December was three. The December before that was 1.7. We're at 92.6 million views total. That's 12 million hours. 
Um, the YouTube Red videos, that they give us those stats for whatever reason, are not as high as I thought. I guess a lot of, not as many people are doing YouTube Red as I thought. Our most watched video is still the top 10 essential games every gamer should own with 1,050,000 views. Overrated Games is second with 383,000. We have uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 reviews that are over, 14 videos that are over 200,000 views each, which is pretty cool. And then views that are over 100,000, it looks like we are... There are 67 reviews that are over 100,000. Seasons has broken over 100,000. Huh. That's really intriguing. So if you have any specific stats questions, you can go ahead and ask them. I like to talk about stats. Except, except I don't mean to, um, to be braggartish about them. I just think it's really cool to look at the numbers. When and how did Cosmic Encounter usurp Duel of Ages? Uh, Cosmic Encounter was my favorite game for a while then. Dipped down a bit when I started playing all these new games. They were that new hotness. Duel of Ages was certainly in that regard. I love Duel of Ages, but Cosmic Encounter is a cleaner game, easier for me to get to the table, and Duel of Ages is best with two. Cosmic Encounter works with a bigger group, and I like it better because of that. Do you think the release schedule of Dice Masters is WizKids striking while the iron is hot in the short term, but burns out the long term viability of the game? I don't know. I don't know what the long term viability of the game is. If you could live in any board game world, which game would you live in? Uh, Candyland? Don't I always answer the same answer to that question? I think I do. For you, is there a game that has improved in a storytelling model in Tales of Arabian Nights? There has not been one that does, has done that yet. Um... Okay, uh, just so people know, I lost a whole pile of questions in chat. My apologies. So if you said anything after, before, have you played Citadels? Which, yes, and yeah, I've done a review on that. If you said anything before that, it got lost. I apologize. I was thinking of getting a dice tower from the fundraiser. It will be my first one. Which one do you think is the best? Well, that's a tough question for me, right? My favorite to drop them in is the plastic dice tower with the Dice Tower guy on the front because it has a little uh, Kaplinko type thing. Um, but uh, for looks wise, I really like the three wooden towers a lot. I don't know which one is the best. I'm gonna have all three of them in my collection. Um, any chance to see you wear that scarf hat in a video? Well, I've worn it in several already um, and possibly more now since it's so freezing down here in the 60s. Um, let's see. What's my favorite fast food chain? Chipotle. What marathon is Thursday, Friday? We're going to be doing a live gaming marathon for those of you watching this. Where we're going to be playing games live for you guys to watch. We're going to start at 10 a.m. on Thursday and go to 10 p.m. Friday. That's 36 hours, but we'll be taking two three-hour breaks. So 30 hours total. Uh, we'll be sleeping during this time. So there'll be different people taking shifts. There's going to be, I believe, I have 12 different people scheduled to show up during that time frame. So I hope you enjoy that. Have you ever used Dave's Insanity Sauce? Yes, it's very, very hot. It's a little too hot to taste ratio, though. Um, do you keep your own collection up to date at Board Game Geek? No, I update it once every couple years. How about making a poll where you, we can vote on what games you guys play at the upcoming live marathon? No, that has not happened. My apologies, and that will never happen. And I feel so strongly on that, I, I would jump up and down if it wouldn't go off the video. And I'll tell you why, because most people don't realize how boring some games are to watch until we actually do them. And then people are like, oh, this is boring. Complaints every single time. Secondly, we want to play games that we enjoy playing, and if we have let other people pick our games, that's not very much fun. Would you do that? Would you go to a gaming session and let other people vote on the games you play? You might. You might be an Omni gamer who likes everything, but likely not. And we're trying to pick games that we think are interesting to watch. Uh, we've done games in the past, and every gaming marathon, there's a couple games that bomb viewer-wise. So that will probably happen here, too, but we're trying to mitigate that as much as we can. Do you get ladder climbing card games? Yes, I do. If so, which ones? Uh, off the top of my head, I, my favorite is um, the uh, one with the little dominoes from Korea. 
um, which name is, for, I'm forgetting at this point in time, but Gang, Gang of Four I also really like. Why not have Melody join your marathon? Because Melody needs to go to school. Um, are all your children homeschooled? Yes. Is there anything your wife and you cannot provide education-wise? Well, there's some things that we can't provide education-wise, but I, I, am, uh, I was before I did the, high, the Dice Tower uh, full time. I was a high school math teacher, which is the most difficult one to do. Our kids are taught via video, so or DVD or streaming actually. So they are having professional teachers teach them their subjects. I'm just there to help them. They can't actually ask questions to those teachers, but if they don't understand something, I can explain about 95% of what they need to know. The one I have a hard time explaining is chemistry and um, physics, well, no, physics I got, chemistry and um, biology. I don't necessarily know all that stuff. But we're also part of a homeschool group, so they go there, and sometimes different things are taught by different people who are experts in their subject. Reviewing Solo Fide anytime soon? I think Sam is going to be reviewing that. What's my favorite god power of Santorini? Uh, probably the Minotaur at this point in time. Um... I helped play this a game two years ago and it still doesn't come out. Does it usually take this long for a traditional board game company to get the product all the way through production? Yes. Are you a fan of box inserts? I think they're cool, but I don't need them. What have been your favorite games to live play? Uh, let's see. My favorite game to live play has probably been... Um, Probably uh, Sheriff of Nottingham. You mentioned earlier Q and A that you shouldn't go out and buy Project Delete, even though it's your number one game of the year. Why is that? Uh, well, I said you shouldn't buy it for an expensive price. If you find a good deal on it, definitely get it. It's my favorite game of the year. If you're sitting around going, "Oh, I'll never see this game in print again," that I wouldn't worry about quite so much. Um. I have not played The Fog of War yet. I want to say Sam took that one, but I'm not sure. It's a two-player game, so those are a little bit harder to get to the table. Um, uh, longer two-player games. How do you decide on who would be doing the top 100 stretch goals this year, especially with Eric doing his just last year? Uh, that is my call completely. I picked them. And Eric does his every other year, or at least he would, so his is interesting to watch. You see mine every year, and mine does seem to do, all well, do well, so I figured it wouldn't be bad to have everyone else do theirs every other year. The list for the live marathon isn't out yet, but I should hopefully have it up today. I asked about Essen, why didn't you support Z saying an underused theme was everyday jobs like cop or nurse when you love Flashpoint? Why were you suspiciously silent? I honestly don't remember anything that happened in that regard. I, suspiciously silent? I, I don't know. Oh, I know what it was because I know because there's a theme that I wanted to say, but I couldn't say. There's, there's a game that we're signing for Dice Tower Essentials which I cannot talk about yet, but I'm very excited about because it it's a theme I think there needs to be more of. Uh, that's probably what it was. If the 250,000 goal gets hit and Dice Tower Quarter starts happening, will you pursue the same course you pursued before it fell through or will you go some other route? No, the course that fell through did not work out at all. That was a bad idea. It was a good idea, just did not work. Um, so now I'm going to be doing it on my own. So. I don't know how much it's going to cost. That's why 250 is pretty much, I figured out how much I think I need to have to get it off and running or at least start it. So I'm not even thinking about it until we hit that 250,000 goal. And we're not even really close to it right now. So unless that happens, I'm not going to worry about it. Um, I 
I never noticed if you have ads in your YouTube vids, but if you did, with that many hits a month, you might not need the yearly pledge thing. Oh, ho, ho. Uh, you would have to have multiple. I think you'd have to have 100 million views a month. I don't even have 100 million views total. Maybe that, maybe that might be high, but you need a ton of views before YouTube starts recognizing you and giving any money your way, really. They get money, but not very much. Um, how big of a problem do you think Kickstarter exclusives? That's not just bling is. I missed out in the TMNT Kickstarter and found out Splinter, Bebop, and Rocksteady were only in the Kickstarter edition. Really bummed out now. No, 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 no. They were very specific. I went and looked at the Kickstarter. They were very specific in saying that they, they were exclusives, but they were exclusives with that art and that models. They said in the future, expansions will come out that have those characters in them, possibly, which means yes, but just with different artwork and different models. Well, then who cares? I love that kind of Kickstarter exclusive. That's great. It gives the people who back the Kickstarter something exclusive that they can have. doesn't affect me as a game player because I don't really care what art and models I have if I can play those characters. So I'm sure that we'll see... Um, Bebop and Rocksteady show up in an expansion. I, can, I would put a lot of money down on that. I'm sure that's going to happen, um, but it would just look different than the ones in the Kickstarter, and I have no problem with that. If they did that and there, you could not get them later on, yes, I would very much join you in yelling about that. Don't you think in the new trick-taking game Eternity, the bonus points going higher and higher every round is a bit random? I did say that to Z. I thought that the bonus points should be evened out a bit more because I felt like the first round did not matter. But I don't remember exactly, and he's the one who reviewed it, so it's probably a better question for him. Did you receive any YouTube play buttons? Yeah, I got one for getting 100,000 subscribers. The next one's a million, so I think I looked at it, and I'll probably hit a million subscribers somewhere around 2027. So <laughs> join me in a decade. And I'll be excited about that one. I'm still not sure why YouTube and everyone else seems to put an emphasis on subscribers. I've always thought views was much more interesting than subscribers. If you have subscribers but they don't watch your channel, what does that matter? Views just seem to be better. And also, obviously, the Dice Towers can have fewer subscribers than a channel that put out fewer videos because most people don't want to be flooded with the mass amount of videos we put out. I want us to be a library more than a subscription service. I like your approved and seal of excellence verdicts. Why not have all Dice Tower reviewers do the same things? If you've noticed, it's been moving in that direction. Um, if the stretch goal for the Dice Tower headquarters is reached, how quick do you think it would actually be up and running? Um, I have no idea. I don't know how long it would take, honestly. We'd have to get the room. We'd have to build the office. We'd have to make sure the internet was running. We'd have to set up the recording studio. We would have to make sure we had utilities up and running, um, and we're doing this while recording, so I don't really know. I hope that it would be okay. Uh, will you be adding any more promos to the Indiegogo? I don't have any uh, plans to do that. I mean, there's one that we're announcing in a couple days, but it's already in there, a slide for it. Um, but I mean, if some companies email me and ask about it, but I have not had that happen. How confident are you currently about the Kickstarter will hit its goal? I feel pretty confident about that. Um, well, about the stretch goals, that I don't have the same level of confidence about. We'll have to wait and see. That is up to you guys, really. Um, will Splendor get an expansion? Definitely. I know you're a fan of expansions, but do you usually purchase all expansions for a game you like, or are you specific in what you purchase? Well, I mean, I get a lot of these expansions sent in as a review, so I, I have the opportunity to pick and choose. But so we'll say about things I keep. Some, like, I keep everything. Cosmic Encounter, although I just did a video last week about the aliens I got rid of from Cosmic Encounter um, because there wasn't even enough room for them. Marvel Legendary, I don't keep everything. I love the game a lot, but I, there's a couple expansions I don't keep. Like, I didn't just keep the newest Deadpool expansion for it, for example. Um... But there's some that I'm interested in every single expansion. Some overwhelm me with expansions that when I fall behind, I just don't care anymore. Most of the information for Dice Tower 2017 crews will probably launch at the beginning of February.
Um, does the stats tool with a YouTube show break down my unique views versus repeat? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if it shows unique versus repeat views. I don't think I can do that. Do you have any input? Stop asking me when games are coming out, folks. I don't work at these companies. Ask the companies for this information. Again, Dice Tower News. Go to DiceTowerNews.com. Read the Dice Tower News. If a game is coming out and we have information about when a game is coming out, I promise you we post it there. I promise you. That is the whole point of that website. If, I, if it's not there, then I do not know. Unless it's a secret, I know maybe when something's coming out. In which case, I can't tell you anyway. I'm going to have to put that in the FAQ. Um, Jason does much less than the other contributors. Well, I would argue against that. Jason did set up the entire cruise. And if you notice, Jason does a lot of reviews of me on Every Game is Awesome. And he's involved in a lot of other ways with the Dice Tower when we do things. Um, but I wouldn't imagine you will see his output go up this year anyway. But remember, he has another job that he does full time. Question, we did a top 10 for X players, but uh, we had a game X, one less would not be there. Uh, blah, 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 blah. If you didn't want to play the game with six players, the game with four players. Yeah, I understand what you're saying there. They're saying it's not fair to take a game off a list because it was on another list, but that's just the way we did those lists. I apologize. I usually say in a review if I think it's good for different numbers of players. Um... Marvel Legendary has exhausted many of their heroes and are getting gimmicky with their releases. They're definitely getting gimmicky with their releases, but I don't know that they exhausted many of their heroes. There's still a lot of great characters that they have not made um, cards for. Um, did you see La La Land? I did not. I didn't even know it existed until yesterday when they, or today when they announced the Golden Globe winners. Um... I've watched your TMNT with Jason and Conan videos. Can you talk why you like TMNT better and if you had to pick one which? Uh, well, it's pretty simple. I like Teen Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles better than Conan. Um, there, but there's a, there's a few more reasons than that. Okay, First of all, Conan has the edge of miniatures. Their miniatures are amazing comparatively to the TMNT ones. The TMNT ones are oh, good, but not amazing. Um, however, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle has... Scenarios that feel like they're much more balanced and play tested, while the Conan ones feel like they're thrown together and they're like, yeah, we think you can play this way. And that works okay. It's fun. They're both good in that way. But TMNT, I think, does a lot better in the balance. They tell you this is what you have. And it feels like a better game, while Conan feels like a better experience, perhaps. Also, I don't mind, but Conan is definitely the most powerful character. So everyone is there helping Conan. And in Team Engine Ninja Turtles, it's all about teamwork. But it basically comes down to the theme. Conan is okay. I don't dislike Conan, but I wasn't like, oh, I want to play a Conan game. But I do want to play a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game. And especially with me, it's much more fr friendly. Um, my family will love playing a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle game. Especially when we get the expansion and let April O'Neil fight and stuff. Um, but they do not really are interested at all in Conan. I'm going to keep both of them for now because I think they're both really fun. But TMNT is my favorite. Have you ever struggled with a book series that you force yourself to read to find out the resolution of the story? No, if, if I really am finding hating a book series but I want to know what happens, I just go read the summaries on Wikipedia or somewhere else. Have you seen the bad lip reading Yoda video? If not, I highly recommend. Well, if you've watched our live plays, either Sam and Z have seen it or they're just very coincident on the things that they say. Um, I, will, I will tell you, I, I, again, I know a lot of people are saying you're going to play this game or that game. Um, well, actually, yeah, I, I can announce that sort of thing now. Uh, let, me pull up my, let me pull up my Google Drive here. Blah, blah, blah. I'll tell you the games that we have planned for the Live Dice Tower. Now, first of all, 
A couple caveats. Because I'm saying the games now does not mean that they will be played. It just means there's a good chance they'll get played. We probably won't have enough time to play all these. Um, it, it, not everything's going to work out as smoothly. There's also going to be a lot of games that I'm not mentioning that are small games, filler games that will probably fit in the cracks. But this is currently tentatively what is planned to be played. Uh, Memoir 44, Overlord, Automania, um, Mission Red Planet, Time's Up, Pandemic Iberia, Liar's Dice, Coliseum, Blood Rage, Jamaica, Fire and Axe, Adrenaline, um, Concept, Cosmic Encounter, Captain Sonar, Project Elite, Dragon and Flagon, King of Tokyo, Deception Murder in Hong Kong, uh, Sheriff of Nottingham, Cash and Guns, Spyfall, Fuji Flush, Tumbling Dice, Junk Art, and Pie Face, Stellar Conflict, Animals on Board, Burke's Gambit, Rock Paper Scissor Wizard, Fuse, Insider, Spyfall, Flick 'em Up, Onitama, Blood Bowl, Celestia. So those are the games that we are thinking about playing, but that is by no means guaranteed. Do you ever miss the cool weather? No. Um, what's the meaning of DT video? I see it in the tweets. Ah, that just means it's a video tweet and it's basically just a little notice I put in there. That's mostly so Facebook catches it and reposts it for me when I tweet it. When I say Dice Tower News could use the most help right now, what does that include? Finding news links, con contrib con contributions on the podcast, both? No, we need it for the website. We need people helping to find the news and writing up the news stories to post there. Will we break up the marathon game videos and post them by game name for later enjoyment? I'm not planning to, but never say never. We'll find out. I don't know. I only got 10 hours of recording space on each camera. I don't know. We'll see. Do I mix different Dixit sets together or not? Oh, definitely mixing them together for sure. Um, what percentage of new movies that you watch are just Disney? Who knows? Probably pretty high, actually. Have you read any of the Wheel of Time series? I read the entire series. I waited for years to read the final one. I think I started reading it when it was at book seven. I think book seven had just come out, or maybe it was book six. One of the two had just come out. And someone said it was good, so I went and read it. I remember as a kid, I remember when the first one came out, I remember reading part of it in the store, found it interesting, uh, but didn't really go farther with it. Um, did I like it? Yes. I'm really, but it was also extremely frustrating. I loved the universe. The universe was extremely interesting. I loved the characters for the most part. But there was a couple things I didn't like. First of all, the, it was way too long of a series. There were moments of really, really cool action that involved a lot of people sitting around and arguing. And if I, I can't tell you how, I, I don't know if Mr. Jordan and his wife hated each other or not. They seemed like they were very much in love. But in this book, men were always talking about how they didn't understand women. And women were always calling men mutton-headed idiots and things like that. And, you know, that wasn't like an occasional thing. We're talking paragraphs and paragraphs and, and just whole things. The good guys never even remotely got along. They were arguing from book one to book whatever number it ended on, 14 or 15. It just, ugh. Oh. Brandon Sanderson, I thought, did a much better job at writing. He was a little bit more concise than Robert Jordan, but even he was constrained because he, there were so many loose ends to tie up. And even he introduced new characters in the last three books that he wrote. So it was really cool. A lot of cool things about it. I like the whole um, one power and the men's was tainted and all that. The first book is incredible. The fourth book is pretty solid. Sixth book, I really liked. So if I was picking the order of the books in the, in the order I like them, the first one's great. The fourth one is just as great, uh, I think. Sixth one's pretty good, although it takes some long times to get to where it's supposed to be. Then the, um, the uh, second and third are fine. Um, books seven and eight and nine and ten, and when we got to that point, it was like, oh, some really cool things happened at the end of book ten, but oh, the time we got there, 
The last three books, though, were very interesting, especially the second to the last one was fat. No, the third to the last one was fascinating. Um, and then, or second to the last, I forget. And then the last one was essentially one really long scene in, for most of it. And I was fine with that because, I mean, come on, you build that many books up, get to the point. Um, but there were still parts of it I found disappointing. There were a couple of things where they said, this is going to be a big deal. And when I got to the end, it wasn't a big deal at all. Other things were much more exciting. So highs and lows overall, I enjoyed it. But I, you know what? I haven't gone back and reread the, the last couple books. Also, I was really annoyed by that. When a new book would come out, I would have to go back and reread several of the previous books just to remember who any of the characters were. Too many characters. Too, too big of a universe. So should there be a game based in it? Well, I guess, but I would really, really, really tighten that game up. Have you caught up on 2016 games yet that you've planned to review? Nope. Have I given up and moved on to 2017? No and yes. I mean, we're still going to be reviewing 2017 games, but we are still like 200 games behind. What's the game you thought would be good to watch live but completely bombed? Um, well, a lot of them. I remember, oh, what's one that I really thought would do well, but people thought was really boring to watch? Oh, man. I don't remember off the top of my head, but I remember that there were some, I was like, oh, this will be interesting, and people were like, no. Oh, Coyote is one, where you put the feathers on your head. I thought people would find that interesting to sit there and try to guess everything, but wow, people were like, this is so boring, because we were just sitting there staring at each other. Um, I said I did What's on the Shelf two years ago as well. What do you know? What board game breakfast that started on? I have no idea. How do you feel about the tiny versions of Money for Sale High Society? I guess that's fine. Do you ever need volunteers help with your booth in Essen? Oh, sure. Uh, Dice Tower Con? No, we don't really have a booth at Dice Tower Con. We have a convention there. <laughs> um, Do you have any new feelings on Feast for Odin? Yeah, I mean, I still like it. Uh, what's your favorite Uwe game for two? La Havre. If you fell asleep during Turn and Taxis, have you not fallen asleep to playing Splendor? I, I didn't fall asleep during Turn and Taxis because the game was that boring. I'll say that, of course, but really I was just tired at the time. And I really like Splendor, so that's why. Can we do a Feast for Odin playthrough? I've thought about it. We're a little cautious on doing it because I know... Lahav inside and out. Uh, Feast for Odin, um, I'm sure we would play some minor rule wrong, and I'm always hesitant to play any game where we make a minor rules mistake. Also, I would I know Lahav's strategy to some degree, but I'd get really yelled at about my Feast for Odin strategy, I'm sure. Uh, the Seven Wonders dual promo card, I believe, is a new one. Um, do you worry when you see Asmodee taking over so many smaller companies? I don't worry about it. I, there's so many companies. If you were at Essen, you would see how many board game companies exist. Asmodee does not control even a remote small number of them. Asmodee is definitely the biggest player in the industry right now, but there are still many, many, many great games that are made by other companies. Um, I don't see any pledges on the fundraising page for the promo pack. Gee, there isn't any. We only have a hundred of those, which is why there are a hundred or ninety of those. I, I keep a couple extra promos for when stuff gets lost or damaged. But we only have a hundred of those, and therefore the hundred that are A through G, that's all we have for those. The promo packs, it's, it's a very mathy thing. It really is. But when I make these promo packs, it, it's very very specific on how we do them. They're not randomly placed in packs. They're placed in packs based on the number we have. We have more A's than B's, more B's than C's, more C's than D's. And I sit there and add up all the numbers. I have Sam double check them. We go over them to make sure we have the right amount of promo packs for each one. And we only have 100 of G's and therefore that's all we can do. And they go in the ones where all the packs are together. As someone who was homeschooled through high school, do you feel like they will lack social development? I realize homeschool groups help some, but it's still a bubble. 
Everything is a bubble, okay? My kids do not lack that social interaction, and it's something that I thought about because I was also homeschooled, and you can see I'm very much a social um, uh, I was about to say something sarcastic. Anyway, I like to talk to people. However, it's very possible. A couple things. First of all, I have a very large family. So there's, you, you, you cannot lack social interaction in my house. Secondly, we're extremely involved at our church, which has a very active youth group, Sunday school programs and things. My kids have tons of friends there. We go to church uh, every Sunday, every Wednesday, and often on Saturdays. There's a lot of times we're at church, lots of interaction there. And the, then the kids do events there. My kids go to those, homeschool things. They can be on a local sports team if they want to be. Now, last year, Melody, Amy, and Holly were all on the softball team uh, for school. And so there's many different ways. Uh, being socially active is nothing to do with school. It's, what you, it's how you as parents let them get involved or sometimes make them get involved in things. Uh, what's my favorite Dice Tower promo in the campaign? Probably the little pet dice guy from uh, Arcadia Quest, but I also really like the custom pack of Time's Up cards, and we need to start devoting on that soon. What's my favorite Mary Poppins songs? Um, hmm, that's a good one. It used to be I Love to Laugh. But I think I'm, I'm, I'm going now closer to Step in Time. No, Let's Go Fly Kite, sorry. The ending song is my favorite. Um, let's see here. Is Cash and Guns a good live play game? Well, we can hope so. Can you describe the maddest you've ever seen someone get during a board game? Oh, I've seen people get really mad. Um, I've seen someone punch the table really hard. As a kid, I, I had the table flip, but those were kids, so I don't know that I count that. I've never seen a table flipped in anger as an adult, but I've seen someone hit the table. I've seen someone leave the room and slam the door. I've seen some really loud shouting at other people. I don't know that I've ever seen a Risk 2210 game end without people being angry at each other. What kind of food did you guys eat when you went to the UK Gaming Expo? Uh, well, definitely when we were there, uh, we ate at a couple of the restaurants close by. There's some chicken chain in, in the UK that I'm like really loving now. There was also a really good burger place there. But uh, after a while, we mostly just ate at those food trucks. So they had a bunch of food trucks out there, and those things were great. I don't know what all that food was, but it was all quite delicious. Expensive, but delicious. Um, getting a lot of repeat questions. Let's see what people are saying on Slack. I have plenty of board games that I would like to give away for a good cause. Would you like if I shipped you the games as gifts? Maybe you could use some for Dice Tower Con. Stuff like that, always email me. Email me off, off list and I can give you ideas in that regard. Um, giving my 11-year-old son Cuban Missile Crisis for his birthday. What would you suggest next? I would play that game first and see their opinion on that one and see what, where you would go next from that. Um, when you come to the UK for a UK Gaming Expo, will you be spending a few days before the con in the UK? It all depends on, on how much money we have, honestly, and how things will work out. Um... Let's see. Tom, what prompted your change of heart regarding live playthroughs? That avatar seems awfully familiar. Um, I put more rules into place over how live playthroughs are. Like, for example, uh, no one should play a live playthrough of a game they're not interested in. They just shouldn't. Um, if you don't like a game, you shouldn't be in a live playthrough of it because that, it's fine that you don't like a game. We certainly at the Dice Tower want to tell it as it is. But if you don't like a game, don't play it. Um, and other things, you know. But uh, also, if, it's, if we're not like 100% sure on the rules, we're going to say that straight up front. Like say, hey, this is like we just did some last week. Sam and Z learn adrenaline. Sam and Z learn 
Vikings gone wild. They did not know the rules. I knew the rules and taught it to them. And even tonight, I'm debating if I, if I have time tonight, like I'm going to do Tom and Melody, learn a new game. And we're just going to learn some games for the first time in camera to show you a little bit about how we do that. That might happen tonight. Depends how tired I am. Um, but even that, I'm very wary of, right? The, the main thing is, is that people really like them. And even though I got a lot of negative feedback on it, I'm just going to have to filter out the negative feedback and just go with the people who like them. Why aren't there any sauce-related pledges on Indiegogo? Come on, man, hot sauce sells. Well, uh, there's, there's, there's uh, difficulties when you add food to items, especially when they're being shipped overseas. What do you do if the same group of people only play games together at your game group? The issue is they always have the best and newest games. I don't know. I would ask them if they don't want you to join, you know, they'll, they'll let you know. Um, I don't know. I, I would try to break into that group if I could. What happened at the Florida airport was very sad being so close to home. Has this event had any impact on you and your family? No, it's about an hour from us, a little over an hour. It's actually very close to where everyone flew in for the cruise. Well, this is the airport most people flew in for the cruise. Um, it hasn't had any personal impact on us. Certainly, we heard about it. Certainly, it was national news, a big deal and sad. I don't often fly out of the Lauderdale airport. Actually, I've never flown out of the Lauderdale airport. I pick people up there and such. My wife has flown out, but not me. So, we'll see. Um, have you tried Kanagawa? Yes, and I did like it. Oh, once again, people are asking questions multiple times, as if that will work. Um... Let's see here, just going through the questions, picking some. Let's see, I'll look at Slack real quick. What's my favorite way to play Cosmic Encounter? Two aliens, one hidden, one revealed. What are your favorite magic tricks? I don't know if I have any favorite magic trick. I always want to do a magic trick where I'm like, whoa, that's cool. And I, I say this, I'm not a huge fan of card tricks because I'm innately suspicious of card tricks. I'm innately suspicious of the way that people do this stuff. And you show me, I'm like, oh, wow, you made that card appear there. But I like to see bigger, grandiose things. I don't know how the people do all these tricks. I just like to see the bigger, more cool stuff. I'm also not a big fan of mental tricks. I find them fascinating. Like, oh, but to me, they're all the samey. You know something that that random person had in their pocket or whatever. That's cool, but that only is interesting to me for so long. I want to see a car appear. Or I want to see it look like you cut someone in half, but you didn't. That's the sort of stuff I like. Cohort I thought was okay. I don't like it as much as Z does. I thought it was interesting. I just felt that it was more tactical than strategic, and it was fun. I just did not love it. Um, do you like Medici? I do not like Medici. Um... I have not watched the Korean show The Genius. I need to uh, watch that at some point. I heard there's a lot of interesting social game stuff in there. Um, <laughs> what did I do in Korea? I taught. What's my favorite instrument? Probably the piano. The piano just has so many options. Now, I'm biased because I can play the piano. Um, I mean, granted, I probably like a keyboard better than a piano because you can do even more with a keyboard. I have a really, really, really nice keyboard. Um, I'm not a great pianist by any means. I only had two years of lessons, actually, when I was in second and third grade. Um, and then I just, my mom made me practice the rest of my life. I'm very good at playing hymns out of the hymnal, and I can mess around and play other stuff. But I'm not a great pianist by any means. If you give me a piece of piano music, I might be able to play it, but, you know, I would probably have to practice it for a while first. Um, but I just like it. I like the range that it has. It has a wide range. After the piano, the trumpet, which coincidentally is another instrument that I, I am... I do not know how to play very well, but I know how to play it on a very basic level. Um, and then the accordion. And I don't care what people say about the accordion. I think the accordion is a cool instrument. Uh, 
Um, if I had a board game character join the Dice Tower staff, who would I choose? It'd be one that had like huge, huge amounts of wealth. Probably the guy from Monopoly. Do more Dice Masters? You know, you'll see us do more Dice Masters in the future, probably. What's my favorite classical piece? The War of 1812 Overture by Tchaikovsky, I think. There's a lot of great pieces out there. But that is probably my favorite. Although, depending on the mood I'm in, the Moonlight Sonata is pretty good. What are some differences between Korean and American board gamers? Any more confrontational, good sports, easy going, lax with rules, etc.? They're much big fans of Euro games, I think, more there. Not a lot of Amerithrash stuff at all, um, but uh, certainly a communal thing. So, party games and things like that. How do you choose the buildings for Puerto Rico when playing with the first expansion? Do you draft them, use a random selection, or what else? Usually just a random selection. I'll just pull them out until we have enough buildings, and then that's, that's what we're playing with. Um, do you use the standard white sidekick dice for Dice Masters or the marbled kind from the collector's box? Eh, whatever kind I'm in the, in the mood to use. Probably the marbled ones. Um, who would I prefer to have in, my team, in a cooperative game? Cobra Commander, Skeletor, Megatron, or Mumra? Um, I don't know who Mumra is, but I don't want the other three on my team. I guess I would pick Skeletor. Wow, Cobra Commander and Megatron are so annoying. <laughs> Cobra Commander, he, he, he would like betray me before the game even started, so that's not worth it. Um, Megatron also, just, just an annoying guy. Skele Skeletor, I guess. He's annoying too, but not as annoying as the other two. Um, for the money cards, I think I did them in one of my board game breakfasts. I can show them off at some point. They're the thickness of a playing card. Um, there's different denominations. I'll have to write it out. I don't remember what the exact denominations are, but I, I tried to pick it so you could use them for a lot of games. Why well, be getting a copy of the War Ring Anniversary Edition with painted minis? Highly doubtful. Highly doubtful. You know, this always remembers, I, I once said on a, a video, someone said something about the War of the Ring, and I was like, all right, guys, you know what they get me for my Christmas present. Wink, wink. And there was at least a couple people who said Tom is a greedy person. He was asking people to send him a $600 game for his Christmas. And it was a joke. And I did not mean for people to send it to me at all. No one actually did. And so from then on, I've got to be really careful what I say in that regard because people took it very seriously. One podcast, they talked about it consistently. They're like, look how, Tom, how greedy Tom is. He actually expects people to send him a $600 game. And I was like, well, I, I, I don't expect people to send me that game. I apologize. It was, it was a joke. I thought it was obvious, but not everything is always obvious. You know, that's something you learn. Um... Tom, you can't wink at us because you have inside info and then thump us for seeing it. You can get us to leak some. Yeah, good point. Moomra is from Thundercats. Yeah, I don't watch Thundercats. Sorry. I've just shot down to the bottom of the questions. Why? Because we're almost done. I'm really sorry about that. Let's see if I have some last ones. I know you hate Kingdom Death. <laughs> I have never said I hate Kingdom Death. I've never played it. I just said I'm not interested in playing it. That doesn't mean I hate it. <laughs> See, this is the problem that the Kingdom Death supporters have, the ones, many of them, is that for them it's a binary situation. You love Kingdom Death or you hate it. I just have no strong opinion on it one way or the other. I think the pinup stuff is really over the top. It's super gross looking, and I don't want to put piles and piles of miniatures together and play a campaign where people can die, drop up a hat. It's, if people enjoy that, fantastic. I don't hate it. It just, I can tell ahead of time, it's like 99% not my style game. This whole binary, you, if you're not with us, you're against us. Come on, guys. Like, we got enough of that in politics. I don't want to see that bleeding over into board games. Like, if you came up to me and said, I I'm, not, I'm not a big fan. Like, Eric, for example, does not like Cosmic Encounter that much. He does not hate it, though. He just is like, eh, not really my type of game. 
That's a far cry from hating something. Kingdom Death just broke all kinds of records. Fantastic. Hooray. I, I, don't, I don't feel like... I'm like, oh man, a game I like isn't hit all the records. That's okay. Kingdom Death has the records. Yay! It's, it's not a big deal. I just like to play games. I don't know that there's always a contest. For me, you know, yeah, we'll say this game's number one. I, I'm, I'm more important to see what games people say are the best as the year goes by. Um, so, let's see. I think that's pretty much it at this point. Just quick looking back over the questions to see if there is any more questions here. Pyramid Arcade is not on either CSI or Amazon. Do you know where I can find it? They made a big deal that it would only be available in stores. So, unfortunately, that's the only place you can get it. I disagree on that philosophy. I think you should make it available online somewhere, but it, it, as far as I can tell, it's only available from the local stores. Well, that's it for this time, folks. I will likely do something live tonight, but I'm not promising it because I still have a lot of work to get done in the next couple hours and try to get a haircut, get the car fixed somewhere in there. So we'll see. If, if I can, we'll do something live tonight. So just watch the channel. If you see it pop up, you know that it's live. If not, well, we'll see you tomorrow. Some, some cool reviews coming out tomorrow. Jason and I uh, took a look at Star Wars Destiny, a second look with everything. And we also compared Destiny to Dice Masters. So those videos come out tomorrow. Um, I believe, uh, let me see what else is coming out tomorrow. I'll just tell you all the videos for tomorrow. Uh, there's also, let's see, tomorrow is the 10th, right? Um, take a look at another board game company. I'll be doing Days of Wonder. Z is going to be reviewing Anansi. Brian will be taking a look at Food Chain Magnet, and I'll be reviewing a game called The Eyes. So all that stuff is coming out tomorrow, so you can look forward to that. Anyway, until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. I appreciate you guys sticking around with me, uh, asking questions. Sorry I didn't get to many of them, but we'll try to get to some next time. Until next time. Anyway, I, I, keep, I keep repeating the exit, so that's that. See you guys next time.